Welcome to Coin Collecting with Scott. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at an era of proof sets in the United States Mint that not only had multiple packaging changes, multiple coin design changes, but also had something very special at the end. Let's take a look at 10 years of the black box proof sets from 1973 through 1982. Now, of course, if you look at back at my previous video of the blue box proof sets, from 1968 to 1972, the US Mint produced them in the similar boxes that are on this top level, but the cases that held the coins were three parts. You had two lenses that held the coins with a black center piece that held the coins in situ. Now, in 1973, they went to a case like this, which was more for people to put these coins on display on a shelf at the time. Good idea, but not very practical. A lot of these coins got toned uh, because of sunlight or uh, light from uh, light lamps in offices when people had them on display but also the case themselves are not very archival you have two lenses clear lenses that hold the coins there is this black um part of the case i don't know what you would call it it's just part of the case itself and it actually go is one big piece that is inside that these like glue together to and, and heat seal together but inside this red part is actually kind of a felt like a cardboard paper felt and then they put this hinged lid on that actually is supposed to act like a display but many times it doesn't work right and the little pins that hold it are often broken so you'll see these sets where the covers are often broken off of the sets now, all this can also cause the coins to tone and tarnish because you have off-gassing from the paper, which wasn't very archival at the time compared to now. You also can get where the case can split apart because it's very fragile, and it can cause air to go into the coins and tarnish them and tone them. You can see the penny is a little bit darker than normal, and so is the, uh, and mostly you'll see it on the penny and the uh, Jefferson nickel more than anything. And you'll also notice in this set how the Kennedy half dollar is turned. That's because they, they don't really hold the coins. So any movement will actually make the coins turn. And a lot of, in a lot of these cases, so collectors either like or hate these cases. I like them because I like my coins in the original packaging, but buyer beware when you're trying to look for these just look for ones that don't have the tabs broken if you can or and the coins that are perfectly straight up and down and have very minimal toning to them there's very few of these i've seen that are like perfect perfect condition because of that now in 1973 the united states mint started issuing the Eisenhower dollar in the proof sets. Now, in 1971, the United States Mint started issuing Eisenhower dollars depicting Dwight D. Eisenhower, the 34th president, for circulation. They didn't issue them in the mint set or the proof set that year. They also didn't issue them in 1972. However, they did issue for 71, 72, 73, and 74. 40% silver Eisenhower coins in proof and uncirculated condition. Those come in brown boxes and blue envelopes. I'm going to do a video on those a little later on. But in 1973, the Eisenhower dollar appeared in the mint set and the proof set. And as you can see, this is the first year that it, it was in the proof set. So you have, of course, the standard Lincoln cent. Jefferson Nickel, Roosevelt Dime, Washington Quarter, Kennedy Half, and the first year 
of the 1973 proof Eisenhower dollar in the proof set. And if you look at the reverse, you'll see, of course, the standard Lincoln, all the standard reverses. But Eisenhower dollar has something special. That is actually the patch from the Apollo 11 moon landing. The eagle has landed. Because we had just gone to the moon in 1969. Beautiful image right there you can see. Now I try to pick out coins that are very... Well, they're not cameo, but they give a slight cameo appearance under certain light. Like that Eisenhower dollar does. So... And that Kennedy. So it's taken me it taken me a while finding these. I pick them out at shows or at coin shops over the years that I've been collecting to find the best quality I can. But I'm not going to break the bank spending the money to get perfect graded condition. I don't really collect graded coins. Now that's the 1973 set. Now, in 1974, you have the same identical coins in the set. But 1974 is a very special year to me. The reason being, 1974 was the year I was born. And you can see the toning that can happen to the coins, like on this Eisenhower dollar. You can also see a little bit of the red fuzz right there. Zoom in a little bit. That's from the felt. That's what can happen. Of course, 1974 had the Lincoln Cent, Jefferson Nickel, Washington, Roosevelt Dime, Washington Quarter, Kennedy Half, and the second year proof set for the Eisenhower dollar. Now we're going to look at the reverse of these coins again. Same case. And you can see there's the nickel. You can see the toning. And that's just common for these coins because of these cases. You can see the Eisenhower dollar, same thing. And this is the best one I could find at the time when I was buying these. Now, like as I said, 1974 is a very special year to me. It was the year I was born. So I have a lot of 1974 uh, coins and commemoratives and dollars and other things from that year. So I, this is my favorite year to collect. Now, starting in 1973, the United States Mint decided to hold a nationwide contest to find designs to be placed on the reverse of the quarter, half, and dollar. Uh, this was going to honor the United States Bicentennial in 1976. So they would have also have dual dates appearing on the obverse of 1776 to 1976 at the bottom. And... They held the contest for 73 into 74 and chose three designs to go on to the quarter, the half, and the dollar. And they started in 1975 appearing on the coins. Now here you're going to see the dual date, 1776 to 1976 on the quarter, the half, and the dollar. The only way you can tell the proof set is in 1975. There's actually two ways of doing this. One is the 1975 date on the cent, nickel, and dime, but also by the dollar, because the dollar in 75 had a running change in 76, the second year they did the bicentennial coins, where on the reverse, they changed the style lettering. And I'll show you that in a second, how one has a different style lettering. It's called Type 1 and Type 2 Eisenhower dollars. Now, as you can see, you have, have the dual dates, same, same pictures of the presidents on the obverse. Now, the reverse, on the other hand, is where things change. You can see, again, the toning on the quarter because of these cases. Now, what you have is the three winning designs. Of course, you have the colonial right here let me get zoomed in you have the colonial drummer and that was designed by jack l r spelled a h r with 13 stars surrounding a flame focus there you go now on the kennedy half dollar you can see independence hall it says 200 years of freedom 
Independence Hall, and this was designed by Seth Huntington. Then you have the Eisenhower dollar, which depicts the Liberty Bell superimposed over the moon. And this is to depict two historic events in the United States, our liberty in 1776 and going to the moon, because we were still going to the moon in 1976, 1975-76. So two major historical events. And this was designed by Dennis Williams. Now, as I said, they did two years of this. So again, you have the 1976 set. And, and that's another thing with these cases, they're very hard to open sometimes. 76, you have the same thing. Dual dates on the quarter, half, and dollar. But you can tell it's a 76 set by the 1976 date. I can focus it on the penny. Come on. There you go. 1976 on the cent, nickel, and dime. And on the reverse, you have the same Colonial Drummer by Jack R. Come on, focus. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then you have the same Independence Hall. And you can see the fuzz on this one in the case and nothing you can do about it. Designed by Seth Huntington. And of course, Dennis Williams, and that's got a lot of fuzz. You can really see how it built, gets, into the, gets into the coin area. Because of the this ends up separating a lot of times and it moves around the felt. So this is where you're going to notice a little bit of a difference. Now, let me pick this one up and show you. If you look at the lettering on the 1975 coin, you can see right here, you can see how blocky it is. The F and the AM in America how blocky, look at the R. You can see how straight and blocky the lettering all is here. 1976, it's a little more refined. It's a little more delicate. You can notice the F, you can notice the R, how it has a little curve to it at the, on its leg. How the M, it's a little bit different of a font. And that was the running change they did. 75 type one. 76 type 2 and you'll see the same exact thing on circulating coins and that's how you can tell a lot of times because it kind of was a one year change and all that 75 type 1 to a 76 type 2 i believe there's some 76s that also have the uh, type 1 design but this was the second one that ran to the end of the um, run so there you have 1975 and 76, and you can see the, the uh, dollars right there, how the lettering is slightly different on each one. Now, in 1977, they went back to the original uh, reverse designs. And 77 is also a favorite year of mine because this is the year my sister was born. So you have 1977, you can see the toning again on the on the scent. Of course, it's gonna happen on all these coins because of these cases. It you see it a lot less in later years, like in the 80s and the 90s in proof sets, because they got a lot better of how they made the cases, the coins, and were taking more care to make things more archival at the time than in the 70s. These were so mass produced, it, it was unbelievable. And they were sold for years after the year was done. So in 77, you have the standard cent, nickel, dime, quarter, half, and dollar. And you can see these are really nice condition. I, like I said, I try to choose coins in nice condition, but a lot of times even this penny, the cent did not look like this when I first got the set. So it has happened over time and there's nothing you can do about it. Then Move on, you see the op, the reverse here, the condition those coins are in. And once again, this is 77. And I've had other sets where it's actually split. 
on these seams. Not this year, but certain years. I've I've bought them, and if you're not stored correctly, they can call, they, these can split apart. It's just something happens where it lets go. In 1978, you have the same designs. Cent, nickel, dime, quarter, half and dollar. And the same images on the reverse. So basically 70, 73, 74, 77, and 78 are all the same obverse and reverse designs. The ch change came in 75 and 76 for the bicentennial. And then 1979 happened. And we'll take a look at that right now. In 1979, they decided to make a change to the dollar to add more diversity into United States coinage. So they had Chief Engraver Frank Gasparro design a new dollar coin. But they didn't change the case that year. So you basically have the same case that held the Eisenhower dollar, but now the dollar was smaller. So let's take a look at what happened. Again, sometimes these cases are very hard to open and you don't want to break them. There we go. So in 1979, the Susan B. Anthony dollar was introduced. As you notice, that and the quarter are very close in size and that was one of the issues they ran into. So you have the Lincoln cent, Jefferson nickel, Roosevelt dime, Washington quarter, Kennedy half as now the largest coin in size, not the nomination, but size in the set. And then the Susan B. Anthony dollar fe featuring suffragette Susan B. Anthony. See 1979. They were also made for circulation, and a lot of people confuse these for quarters because of their size. And one strange thing they did, if you look at the reverse of it, first off, look at the case. It's the same case. They just added a spacer to hold the coin in the same spot as the Eisenhower dollar. They didn't want to make new cases for this year because this was a quick change that they did from one year to the next, and they had a lot of these cases left over, I believe, and they just decided to do this. But it's the same reverse as the Eisenhower dollar. They didn't change that. They just shrunk it. So they really just put a new face on the coin and left and shrunk it down and left the rest alone. Now, you notice how the edge is supposed to be octagonal or have these um, sides that are um, straight. That's actually how the design of the coin was supposed to be. It's supposed to have those almost octagonal sides, but instead they made it round and just made that as part of the image. So that was 1979. The Susan B. Anthony continued in 1980. And you'll notice the boxes from 73 to 79 are all the same. 80 is the change. And in 1980, they went to a smaller case to hold six coins and decided to get inventive again and make another display. But this time, and this gets hard to do, you pull the whole lens holder out with the coins. This time, instead of felt, it's a red plastic with a two-piece plastic lens and that red plastic holds the coins just like in 1968 to 1972. That was a good change. This was ridiculous. There's your display case. Yeah. And there's even instructions. On the back of the boxes. How to remove... And how to display. Think what you want. I love the sets. But. The mint got better. In later years. So. You have. The same. And a lot of times these are without their boxes. Or out without this. 
you have the Lincoln cent, nickel, dime, quarter, half, and the second year of the Susan B. Anthony dollar. Of course, the same reverses. So, that's 1980. 81, we get the same thing. You get the same coins, same display case, same box. Just a new date. And this was the final year of the Susan B. Anthony dollar. Well, not quite. They did bring it back in 1999 before the Sacagawea, but we're not to that year yet. So, this was the final three years. There was only three years of these proof sets produced. In 82, they got really ingenious because they had a, they decided to keep this case, but they needed to fill a hole. So they came up with this idea. A one year only United States Mint medal, bronze medal, that says the Department of the Treasury, 1789, and states on the other side, United States proof set. One year only in this set is this mint metal. And of course, you have the cent, nickel, dime, quarter and half as before, and no more $1 coins. So you have the end of the dollar coin, and you have this one year only metal in this set. Same case, same display for 82, but now, Starting this year, you have five coins, and this five coins would stay as the only until 2000 when you had a dollar coin rejoin the proof set. Focus a little. So, that is. The 1973 through 1982 10-year run of United States Mint black box proof sets. Tell me, do you collect these? Do you know someone that does collect these? Do you like the case designs as they are for your collection, or do you prefer graded or um, displaying them and collecting them some other way in albums, maybe? Let me know in the comments below what you think about these proof sets. And as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And as always, Enjoy numismatics, the hobby of kings. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and tap the bell for notification. Also check out my Facebook and Instagram pages for news and upcoming video information. Check out my other videos if you enjoy coin collecting or toy collecting. Thank you very much for watching.